That's Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we're here to talk about Welcome to Chechnya, which will be available to stream on HBO Films June 30th, 2020. Uh, it premiered at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival, uh, competing in the documentary section, uh, where it won uh, an award in editing, and then it uh, played in the panorama section at the 2020 Berlin International Film Festival, where it won the Teddy, the Amnesty, Amnesty International Prize uh, and the Panorama Audience Award. It's the third uh, documentary from filmmaker David France. And David France did How to Survive a Plague. You've seen both his previous, yeah, How to Survive a Plague, which was Oscar nominated uh, about ACT UP and TAG, uh, and uh, The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson in 2017. So this documentary revolves around um, the Russian LGBT network mm -hmm. and their sort of reaction to the gay purging that occurred in Chechnya in 2017 mm -hmm. and continues. And continues, yeah. Um, so the people who are from the Russian LGBT network, they're, who we see on camera, their names are David and Olga. Yeah, David is Steve, a journalist, uh, and Olga Baranova. So the film starts with um, David on the phone with a woman named Anya. Mm -hmm who's saying she needs help, and he asks her why. She says, because my uncle found out I'm a lesbian, and if I don't have sex with him, he'll tell my dad, and my dad will kill me. Mm -hmm. So obviously a very dire situation. Then we move to sort of a common uh, anecdote in this film, which is uh, showing like intercepted footage, yeah, like cell phone footage of <clears throat> gays and lesbians in Russia and Chechnya being like, brutalized by the police, victims of hate crimes. Mm -hmm. So in the first one, we see a group of men who I'm assuming the cops uh, thought were homosexuals, like assaulting them and then telling them that um, all of our problems are because of people like you. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sets the tone for, I think, what's happening in Chechnya. Mm -hmm. Like, because several characters say like, Characters. Characters, sorry. Subjects in the film, mm -hmm. in the documentary, that, um, like, there's just a lot of homophobia because people believe, like, they just don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. So that's the source of a lot of their issues. But the current situation is stemming from uh, a drug raid that happened drug raid, in right. 2017 uh, that I believe was... Uh, it, it, I'm getting ahead of myself, but where they discovered... Uh, One of the gentlemen involved in the raid, they uh, confiscated his phone and found, like, gay material. Mm -hmm. And somehow, the documentary doesn't do a good job of it connecting these dots, but I think law enforcement thought that they needed to sort of wipe out all gays mm -hmm. because they're the source of, like... The issue with drugs? Because one, the, every person that they caught uh, was tortured into revealing the names of uh, six others. They had to point the cops, law enforcement, to other gay people. Yeah, so it's a witch hunt. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Uh, and then it was also covered, I believe, in The New Yorker? I might be misspeaking, but uh, in the U.S., which is uh, where the, uh, we, the growing awareness of it. I think we're fumbling because uh, while I think this is a very important subject that needs to be brought to the world stage and I don't think the documentary does a good job of fully explaining what's going on, which we'll get into. Okay. But so uh, David and Olga, the Russian LGBT network has many safe houses in Moscow. So they kind of, uh, their work is getting people safely to these safe houses and then attempting to find them asylum if necessary as refugees and countries which will accept them, mm -hmm. the U.S. not being one of them. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, all of the individuals who are being assisted by this group, their faces are distorted, like with, with what looks like a Snapchat filter. In um, the first documentary, I believe, to use that technology. Um, obviously to protect their identities. Um, but one gentleman in particular is kind of the focus mm -hmm. who... Ulti we ultimately learned that his name is um, Maxim Lapunov. Mm -hmm. His face is hidden. Um, he's a Russian gentleman who was... Uh, detained, into detained. detained and tortured in Chechnya, a uh, gay events planner, uh, but was released ultimately because he uh, is Russian. Is Russian. Um, so the crux which, of the issue is... Which I guess we'll get into, I think, a problem with the... Sorry to interrupt you. The... Uh, 
the relationship between Russia and Chechnya is, uh, is also of historical, historical significance enough, which explains also why Lapinov was also let go. Right. The documentary doesn't explain that, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the crux of the issue is investigating these crimes is difficult because anyone who was victimized is too afraid to come forward. But the documentary builds up to uh, Maxim agreeing to like press charges and testifying. He does a press conference. So that's like three quarters of the way mm -hmm. into the documentary when he decides he will do this press conference that we learn his real name and we see his real face. Mm -hmm. Which is actually a very, uh, I thought that was a very well done moment. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And he's very brave, obviously. Um, um, ultimately, like this issue is not resolved, right? Like there are still cases being persecuted in this region. So we know that it kind of doesn't go anywhere. The work that the Russian LGBT network is doing is very important. Um, the, fil the film sort of culminates with um, the charges, like an investigation being denied by the Russian government. So that's it. We learn that um, the man who is the head of the Chechnyan government, his name is Ramzan Kadyrov. Mm -hmm. He is a pretty like despicable character. Yeah, disgusting. He, mm -hmm. He's like this super religious, like gun-toting, wannabe UFC fighter looking man who, in one point in the documentary, um, some footage of him doing an interview with a U.S. reporter. On uh, Brian Campbell's like uh, Real Sports or yeah. something. The reporter asks him about the sort of the gay purge and his stance on homosexuals in Chechnya. And this man basically says, like, th those things didn't happen because there are no gay people in Chechnya. And if there were, they need to go ahead and leave, be you know, for the purity of our race and because they're all like despicable human beings. Mm -hmm. So obviously the head of the Chechnyan government is is, a cretin. is like a monster. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. He's still there running shit and gays are still being persecuted. The end. Appointed by Putin uh, and who is, you know, able to get away with things because he keeps uh, a, a tight rein on Chechnya, which do you want to go into that now? Sure. So, you know, Chechnya as a child in the 90s, uh, and having to listen to current events in school, that you know, that that uh, is a name that resonates with a lot of political conflict in my mind. Because in the mid 1990s, there was the first Chechen War, and then in the late 1990s and early 2000s, the second Chechen War. And uh, the, during, because they were not always uh, lorded over by Russia, the first Chechen War, they uh, the the Chechen Republic, uh, which was two different parts at the time, uh, had de facto independence. And then in the second Chechen War, the Russians. Did did gain uh, uh, control over that region again. Uh, and you know, you'll notice these kind of uh, uh, historical things happening with all of these areas around the old Soviet Union territories. Uh, what's happened in Crimea, obviously all the, all the things with Ukraine uh, that are nasty. Uh, so I think it would have been helped if this had been just briefly at least a little more educational about some of this uh, uh, history uh, to explain because none of what you just explained is in the documentary. No, to, and, and if you are have never heard of Chechnya before, or like you have to go back and research those kind of things. But I think it's important to note that uh, Putin uh, really appreciates how uh, Katerov, you know, has taken control. Does his bidding? Yeah, yeah. In, in this country and keeps a tight rein on it. So obviously, like this subject matter is very important. And I don't think it's like meant to be critiqued. Like, is this a good film? Right. I mean, it's not meant to be entertaining. It's it's meant to be an education. And I think in that department it failed because I finished watching the documentary and had like a dozen very basic questions that I think the documentary should have answered. Sure. Um, so I was kind of disappointed. It it feels kind of like the person who made it got a hold of this footage that these individuals from the Russian LGBT network had and decided to make a documentary around it. But there are just so many questions I have that it doesn't answer. And probably the most important is like, what can we do to help? Right. right. <laughs> and that said, the, the, its mere existence uh, is important. Yes. And, and the uh, mostly positive critical reception, I, I believe, is also important. And, yeah. But, but then it also, who's going to watch this film? And it, you know, there's a, a large degree of preaching to the choir, I, I think here. But uh, you know, Mr. France, who was Oscar nominated for How to Survive a Plague, um, 
It, I, I felt a little bit this way about his Marsha P. Johnson doc, which focuses more on Sylvia Rivera, obviously, who's still alive. Uh, but, you know, tackles the subject and, you know, he poses more questions than he really... Bites off more than he can chew, perhaps. Uh, it, yeah, I, I left myself wishing this was crafted in a, in a different way. Uh, because I, it, I do feel like it is a little unnecessary to pose it as a thriller, and I, and I understand that. Um, it, like the the soundtrack is uh, designed in a way for us to you know be white knuckle pulse pounding thriller as we watch people go through customs in various uh, cell phone footage sections. The way it's edited and the sound is just everything. It, it's very 007, and I just don't understand. Like the documentary doesn't explain the laws in the region these people are occupying. Like so. Yeah, literally every every time anyone interacts with anyone, it's made to seem like they're going to be like, you know, detained and. Which is important. I, I get that it's recreating the 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 dread and the the horrible anxiety and tension. But is it? It's not recreating because these aren't dramatizations. This is like real footage of these people moving about, and I just, I, I, I need to be told what's happening. I don't need to just like hear something like dreadful. Right, right. Dreadful. But I think I think, but with those kind of you know tricks in the background it's trying to instill that yes, sense of right. fear that those you're people right. have going through that um, so it's not without merit it's just that watch it so you can understand what's going on and then you'll have to do your own research to figure out how you can help why this how this is even happening that said I also I kind of like you know I like that once uh, Lapinov's identity is revealed it shows him because a section of it also details what they had to do to get his boyfriend to join him in Moscow uh, to pull him out of Chechnya and it shows them united and being intimate in a bathtub and I think those are powerful images. they are yeah the the, yeah. the people yeah. yeah I mean the subjects are and certainly you know. certainly listening to a Steve and, and Baranov speak uh, I, I think is is powerful on its own as well mm -hmm. so I, I do really appreciate that this uh, exists and that I experience it. It's just that this, and you know what? Maybe that should be the point of it. You should be moved to look beyond just that. What would you give it? Um, I would give it um, three out of five stars. You know, I wanted. I also. I would give it two and a half out of five. I also wanted to say we had just watched um, Voyage of the Damned. Okay. The '76 Stuart Rosenberg film, which is about that the uh, SS St. Louis, uh, with all those uh, German or Jewish refugees from Germany that were uh, supposed to go to Cuba, I believe, and then it was just a stunt, and no other country would take them, and they had to circle back to Europe, okay. including the U.S. and, and Canada. Uh, it, to me, it fit, you know, history repeats itself. We're doing this against people. <laughs> I don't know. It's just disgusting. But uh, it, it reminded me very much of that um, Dire Straits. All done. Mm -hmm. All right, bye. bye.